Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, so if you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. Couple of, couple of changes, couple of things you might notice from this video that are different to my usual videos. One, I'm sitting in the comfy chair in my office rather than at my desk, and two, I'm filming this on my new Fuji X-T3 for no other reason than I really just wanted to use it and give it a good old thrashing before I go to Nepal, which funnily enough is I'm there now. It's very confusing making videos for the future. So today's video is going to be an educational video. You see, there are a lot of photographers out there who create some incredible educational content from top tips videos to online photography courses to blog posts or just simply in the field kind of inspirational content just like mine. And really, if you like that kind of inspirational content in the field, then go ahead and subscribe. And whilst all of this education can certainly help benefit your photography, I do wonder if there is a better way, a way that is a bit less popular with the well-known photographers. So instead of me sharing my best images from the best locations and telling you everything I did right in order to get this image, I'm gonna share some bad photographs from some average locations as well as epic locations. And I think the value in me sharing bad images, and when I say bad images, I don't mean test shots and I don't mean, you know, uh, snapshots, opportunistic kind of stuff. I'm talking about proper images where I contemplated the scene, worked to composition, set up my tripod, and sometimes got so, got so much tunnel vision, and I was so stubborn with a particular scene that I shot it anyway, blind to the fact that actually it was in fact a rubbish image. And I really do think that you can, learn a lot, if not more, from looking at bad images as opposed to looking at good images. So, I'm gonna show you, not this, this is one of my epic shots <laughs> from Patagonia. I'm gonna show you some bad photographs and I'm gonna start with this one. Now this, on the face of it, when you first look at it, you think, well, that's a, that's a nice image. You know, it's well exposed, it's sharp, it's colorful, it's peaceful. Yeah, I'm not talking about technical um, faults here with images, but this photograph, which I took not too long ago, I, w I worked on it for so long to get the balance right and to make sure that it was symmetrical. And I was so fixated with the hanging leaves and the, the reeds coming up that what I didn't really notice or didn't think was important until after the fact was this window here, this natural frame. This image doesn't work because there is nothing in that window. It is empty. And that is empty space as opposed to negative space. And I think I'm gonna mention that a couple of times in this video. So whereas straight off the bat you think this is an okay image, the more you look at it, the more you get that feeling of, what am I looking at? There's, there's no subject there. The only way this could have been improved was one of two things. One, if there was something in this window you know, I don't know, an eagle or a, or a yacht or something like that. Um, or if these uh, these leaves hanging down were all level and nice and symmetrical, symmetrical and uniform, and then that would be a nice abstract number. But, you know, this one, as it stands, does not work as an image and is quite, it's just not great. But don't worry, they get a lot worse. Okay, this one. Now, this isn't a snapshot, okay? This is an image that I worked on for well over an hour. And when I say worked on, I mean drone footage, camera footage, piece to camera, talking, B-roll, taking the photograph. I worked on this for so long. And what happened was I was walking through the woods and spotted this yellow tree. Oh, you man, you know how much I love a yellow tree. And this one really stood out. Look how vibrant it is. Look how good of a subject it is. And it is. It's a fine subject, but it's a bad photograph. And that's because the surrounding environment doesn't support the subject. It's messy. These trees, this one in particular here, they cut off the, uh, the branches of the yellow tree. The left hand side of the image, all of this scrappy twigs and branches are coming in and it's just horrendous. This side of the image is green and messy and, and not very organized. And, and then that's makes the whole image feel unbalanced. Now, I, 
when I was in the field, I kind of thought I could get away with it. I thought I could shoot wide open and soften the foreground, you know, softening all of these branches. And I thought I'll darken it in post and you won't even see this. You'll be so fixated on the yellow tree, but that's just not the case. Everything around the yellow tree is uneven, unbalanced, and screaming for attention, which pulls the viewer away from that yellow tree. How could I have improved this image? Well, if I'd had my chainsaw, that would have helped. I would have cut down these trees on the left here and these branches. I would have probably cut down a couple of the green trees on this side and then I'd have cut down this tree here, and just, you know, which would have, of course, opened up the view to the yellow tree. But of course, you know, we don't even remove twigs from dead trees, let alone taking a chainsaw, so that's not gonna happen. But what I'll do is I'll show you an example of a very, very similar image, which I captured a few weeks ago. Um, same idea, same kind of thing, but it works much better. And that's this image, yellow tree in the woods. The difference being there is nothing between me and the yellow tree, so you don't have anything interrupting the shape and form of the tree. And there is nothing really creeping into shot, pulling the eye and distracting away from the main subject. Everything else in the frame is subdued, fairly uniform and just nice and quiet. Therefore, all of the attention is on the yellow tree. Whereas in this one, as much as I love the yellow tree and as much as I tried to make it work, and as much as I thought I had made it work, it's just awful, awful, a bad image and I'm quite embarrassed by this. <laughs> Which is great because I'm showing it to the world. All right, this, this photograph. I hate this photograph. And I included this in a video about two months ago. And I don't know, honestly, hand on my heart, I don't know what I was thinking. I think I was just trying to get an image to complete the video. And that is a trap you can fall into if you're a photographer working on YouTube. Sometimes, you can you feel like you have to get an image to complete all of the hard work that you put into creating a video. And that's what exactly what I did here. Why doesn't this image work? It's quite simple. There is no focal point. There is nothing. This may as well be a picture of cat sick. You're not looking at anything. What is the viewer looking at? What am I trying to show to the viewer? If I can't answer that question, then it's not a good image. You should always ask yourself that when composing a photograph. What do I want the viewer to look at? What am I showing them? What am I trying to get across in my image? And in this case, I didn't even know, nothing. It's just a mess. First I thought maybe a bit of coloring, a little bit of a focal point with this uh, tree trunk, but no, it is horrendously bad. And it's messy, chaotic, there's nowhere for the eye to land, does not work as a photograph. How could have I improved it? I don't know. If there was more color, maybe it would have been a bit more of an abstract, but even then I don't think it will have worked. What this really needs is a solid focal point. Something like this. This is a similar kind of idea. Um, lots of color, lots of foliage, but there is a very, very clear and obvious focal point with that black, strong form of the tree. All right. This is an epic location. And what this just goes to show is even in epic locations, you can still take crap images. And this is a bad photograph. If I was judging a competition and this came in, it would be dismissed in a split second. Why? Great subject. It's even got some nice light, but there's no atmosphere. And there's no balance and harmony within the image. Let's break it down. Blue skies, it's Blue skies are never really the landscape photographer's friend. Let's, let's, you know, let's face it. The light's very harsh, which means the shadows are very, very deep. So you've got that unattractive contrast. The foreground is sloping from left to right, but there's nothing on the other side really that's strong enough to tip the scales and rebalance the image. So you've got this very heavy, dominant, dark shadow hill thing just just on the left side. And that really ruins the whole thing. You know, I mean, yeah, you could, let's have a look. You could probably make this image black and white and that will improve it a little bit. But the problem really is this. So I think when I took this, I was probably looking at the back of my camera and I was so like happy that I could see Fitzroy and that there was a lovely bit of light on it. I was probably, 
just focusing too much on the mountain and I wasn't doing my edge patrol and checking, you know, looking at this. I don't know. So, how could it have been improved? Uh, the best way to improve this, two things. One, shoot it earlier on in the day so you get more atmosphere, softer light with more colour and see if you can fix this sloping foreground. I have an example here. This was the same mountain, uh, shot from further back, but more or less, you know, a very similar image. And you can see this was photographed much earlier on in the day. And you're watching this, you're a landscape photographer, you know that the best light is at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, in most cases anyway. And here's a great example, lovely pink magenta light which means your highlights aren't as harsh, so you can hold more detail in the shadows, so you don't have that contrast. A little bit of wispy, wispy clouds in the sky, which kind of gives it a bit more atmosphere, but really it's all about the light. And look, there is nothing distracting. So the, in the last image, you've got this big black bit of foreground sort of unbalancing and tipping the image in the wrong direction. Here it's all nice and level, and it's nice and layered, and you can see the details in the shadows, so the contrast isn't too high. And that is another example of how I would have fixed this bad image. Okay, moving on to the next image, sticking with an epic location. Uh, this is probably the best example of a bad image that I have. The reason this is a good ex example of a bad image is because it has all of the elements that you would look for when taking a great landscape photograph. We have epic mountains, we have snow and ice, we have foreground interest, we've got the ocean, we've got waves. So really, this, this should work as an image, okay? It has a lot going for it, but it doesn't work, and it just goes to show that a great view certainly doesn't mean you're gonna get a great image. So this is mine, you know, I remember taking this, it was years ago, but I remember it like it was yesterday because I worked so hard for this image. It was the only time I've ever combined landscape photography and yoga. I was getting in some funky positions, trying anything and everything to compose this photograph and I just couldn't get it right, but I, I was stubborn and I kept working it and kept working it and finally this was my image and it's a shocker. It's a shocker, and I can tell you why. We can break it down, and we can see exactly why this is a terrible photograph. Uh, the first and obvious thing is there's no light, but that's not to say that an image with no light can't be good. Of course it can. Light isn't everything, although it is incredibly important, but there's no light. The second thing is, because there's no light, there's no texture in this foreground. It's very flat. It's very dark, it doesn't have any pop to it, and light would have certainly helped with that. Light would have also created depth within the image. image. But more importantly than light is balance and composition. Um, and this image is way off balance, and that's because everything is on the right-hand side. And everything that is on the right-hand side is kind of leading and pointing this way towards the left-hand side of the image. And what do we have in the left-hand side of the image? Yeah, nothing. Empty space, not negative space. Negative space is a good thing. And I could make a whole video on negative space versus empty space, but empty space, dead space, useless space. Everything's leading this way to nothing. Now, how could this have been improved? If this bank of cloud wasn't here, maybe we would have had a beautiful sunset, so we would have had light hitting the mountains, would have been able to see the source of the light, which would have given more interest, more atmosphere, more mood. That would have improved it and helped tip the scales back and rebalance the image. Um, more clouds up here to add interest, or maybe a really big sailing ship just here to fill this space. That would have helped. So it's all about balance. Um, I'll show you an example of a similar kind of image uh, taken on the same trip that has more of what I was talking about when it comes to balance and stuff like that. So this was taken on the same trip. Now this image doesn't have light, so you know it just goes to show that again you can make nice images without light. But what it does have that the other image didn't is balance and harmony. We've got the mountains here on the left, 
that just nicely fill most of that horizon and they're just cut off at the very very tip there and then in the foreground we have a center strong focal point because of this pool of waters reflecting the blue sky above you've got vibrancy you've got nice sort of contrasting texture so you have the textured rock and the smooth water again it's dead center so it's an anchor and it's balancing the image the sky is much darker on the right hand side than it is on the left hand side which again helps address the balance within the image because although there is more going on on the left hand side up here with these mountains the ocean and the dark sky here really help readdress the balance within the image and that you know that really really counts for a lot and is what this image is missing is that balance and interest so let's just go back and briefly summarize um, some of the key things that we can learn from these bad images empty space no focal point a natural frame that contains no interest a clear and obvious subject but the surrounding environment does not support the subject and actually screams and distracts away from the subject cat sick just nothingness blur horribleness emptiness confusion what am i asking the viewer to look at god only knows you always need to ask yourself that question uh, balance 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 totally totally unbalanced and a certain lack of atmosphere and the same kind of thing we have all of the elements that should make for a good landscape photograph but unfortunately all of these elements are over to the right hand side pointing to nothingness and there is nothing in this left side here to readdress that balance so always always think about that think about the balance within your images it's one of the most important things I look for, edge patrol for crap coming into your image and balance. Right, great. <laughs> thank you so much. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm surprised, I'd be surprised if you don't know who Squarespace are. I really would. So instead of me yabbering on about building websites and stuff, um, just let me say that it is easy. I've built a couple of websites using Squarespace and for, it's a photographer's dream if you want your own online portfolio and website. So go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and give it a free try. And if you like your free trial, use the off code Heaton for 10% off your first purchase. That thank you so much. Join me next week when hopefully there will be content from Nepal. So very, that sounded like nipple, didn't it? There'll be content from Nepal. So uh, yeah, very, very much looking forward to that. And hopefully I'll see you then. So until next time, Bye for now.